In this video, I'll introduce some of Hive's new features. First of all, we have given the user interface a complete overhaul. We think this new look is easier on the eyes and more readable than the blue and honeycomb themes we used for the previous versions. Apart from full NKS compatibility, we've also added over 350 new presets created by some of our favorite sound designers. Those presets can be found easily via the saved search New Hive 2.0 presets in the preset browser. If you're a registered Hive user and want to upgrade, please read the document uhe hive 2 upgradepdf which comes with the download. Now, let's talk about the new features. The most obvious addition is the section below the envelopes and LFOs. These new modulation sources were inspired by our adventures in modular synthesis, and we think they complement the existing set nicely. First, we have two West Coast style function generators, one to the left and one to the right. Although they only have five parameters, these can act as envelopes, LFOs, lag generators, clock dividers, and much more. The function generators are capable of surprisingly complex modulation and can add expression in ways that traditional modulation sources cannot. They can also transform a modulation into something else entirely. For example, in this patch, a function generator creates a random rhythm, which is always in sync with the LFO tempo. In the center, we have something called a shape sequencer, which can act as a set of complex envelopes, as rhythm generators or pattern gates. While it looks like a baby version of what you may know from other synthesizers, this shape sequencer can do a lot more than first meets the eye, without the tediousness typically involved with complex modulators. Next up, we added drag-and-drop modulation assignment directly from the sources onto the target parameters, automatically creating entries in the modulation matrix. You can usually edit the modulation amounts right there at the target control. Just select any modulation source and edit the target parameters assigned to it. We added a scope module, which works almost exactly like the oscilloscopes you might know from some of our other synths. Only, you can drag and drop up to four modulation sources onto the scope and visualize what's going on with them. This is particularly useful for the function generators and the shape sequencer. You can also freeze the display and zoom into the area of interest almost down to sample level. Shift drag or shift wheel the bar and handles to move in high resolution steps. Please note that the scope and the wavetable view of the hexagon add to Hive's CPU footprint. You can save resources by switching to other panels when you don't need them. Next, we put sample and hold in each mod matrix slot so that the modulation source is sampled at the zero crossings of another modulation source. Apart from the LFOs, of course, the shape sequencer and the function generators are particularly well suited for this kind of task. We also have more quantization options in the matrix, which are great for pitch parameters, such as oscillator tune and filter cutoff. You'll find scales and chords in there. Hive 2 does those chiptune arpeggios quite easily. Hive's on-screen keyboard now has a scale-based quantizer. You can define the notes that Hive can play, and all other notes are rounded towards the selected ones. This is great for keeping the sequencer or arpeggiator within the harmonic scale of your track. As a special modulation target, we added a hidden diatonic transpose parameter to each oscillator. This lets you modulate the oscillator using the quantization of the keyboard. 
You can take, say, an LFO and modulate an oscillator's pitch in steps defined by the scale you selected on the keyboard. These even respect the microtuning tables, which opens up Hive for algorithmic composition. That's it with a quick overview.